God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. Give us a heart of love and fear. 
fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy, and walk in the ways of truth. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all the peoples. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord. of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou givest us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants, and for the common good. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widow, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We seek thee to hear us. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, <laughs> and ignorances, and to endure us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanders, and to turn their hearts. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord. Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted. 
hatred of Satan, make speed to help thy servants who are assaulted by manifold temptations. And as thou knowest their several infirmities, let each one find thee mighty to save, through Jesus Christ thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Be to Let's read together the portion of Psalm 91 on the bulletin insert, responsibly by half verse. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold. My God, my trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, and the Lord is my there shall no evil happen to you. Shall For he shall give his angels charge over you. you they shall bear you in their hands. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall the lion and serve the because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. With long life will I satisfy him. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord.
Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was banished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. And the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their right hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Speak these words in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's the first Sunday of Lent. We sang the great litany, and we have Jesus in the wilderness. One of my favorite passages on this first season of Lent. Jesus led into the wilderness, sent into the wilderness by the Spirit, there for 40 days, a reminder of the 40 years, as we heard in that Old Testament passage, um, that the Israelites stayed in the wilderness. Why do I love this passage so much? I think when we see Jesus in the wilderness, when we see Jesus struggling with Satan and temptation, when we see all of that in today's text, we are reminded that to be human, to be human, to be human is to find yourself in seasons of life in the wilderness. All of us have spent some time in the wilderness. If you came to Father Beekner's class a couple of Wednesdays ago on Dante, one of the greatest pieces of poetry, it opens, and midway through my life's journey, Dante says, midway through my life's journey, I found myself, what? Lost in a dark wood, lost in the wilderness. Because to be human is to find yourself lost in the wilderness. When was that for you? Maybe someone you love died. Maybe it was a divorce. Maybe it was an illness. Maybe it was a lost job. Maybe it was a struggle with your own sins. At some point, you found yourself in the wilderness. I remember for me, I was serving as a chaplain, a hospital chaplain in 2004 at Texas Children's Hospital. 
in a children's hospital. That night, three young infants died on my watch. I remember going back into the hospital room, the one I was spending the night in because I was the chaplain on call that night, and being in the midst of a wilderness was almost too much. We see Jesus in the wilderness today because part of what it means to be human is to be in the wilderness, but we also see Jesus in the wilderness Because part of what we learn in the wilderness, part of what we learn and part of what we take out of the wilderness is what God intends us to be. We leave that wilderness different than we entered it. And God will use that to make us into the person we are supposed to be. I tell Christians to look at another example of somebody entering the wilderness, and that is Paul. Paul, the author of pretty much half of the New Testament. Look at Paul. Luke, St. Luke, the writer of the Gospel, also writes the book of Acts. And when Luke tells us about Paul's conversion, he talks about Paul being on that donkey, that horse on the Damascus Road, getting knocked off of it, right? Getting knocked of it, going blind, being baptized by Ananias. And Ananias, the scales fall off of his eyes and almost, like literally almost like the next verse, Paul's up, ready to go, ready to be this apostle for Jesus. Very quick in Acts. That's a historian sugarcoating it for everybody. But what does Paul say? How does Paul describe it? If you look at Galatians, the opening chapter of Galatians, Paul tells his own conversion a little differently. He does talk about getting knocked off. He does talk about encountering the risen Christ. He recounts all that, but then he says... Then he says, when Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall, when Humpty Dumpty pretty much had a great fall, what happened? He fell into a bunch of pieces. And then Paul says, I went away. He said, I went away for three years into Arabia. Paul had that conversion. He spent three years In Galatians, he says, I spent three years after this in the wilderness. Three years. Because to be human, to be human involves entering the wilderness. And after three years, Paul came out of the wilderness. He met with Cephas, he says. He met with James. And it was then, it was then, that God used him as God intended him to be. The wilderness is an important place. I've been talking a lot about it to my kids at school. We're in the 1880s, about the time this place was built. We've entered the era of Teddy Roosevelt, And as we've been talking about his life about the past week or two, I've reminded them about the importance of the wilderness in his life. Young Teddy Roosevelt was definitely born with a silver spoon. He probably knew, I've seen the checks that were sent from New York to help fund this construction of this place. He probably knew those people. He was born in New York, to a very affluent family, definitely had the silver spoon in his mouth, decides to take a stab at politics after he graduates from Harvard, enters the state legislator, marries his college sweetheart, finds out she's pregnant, they're expecting their first child, he is in Albany, New York, in the legislature, 
February the 13th, 1884 is the date. He gets a telegraph saying, good news, your wife's in labor, you're going to be a daddy. Of course, they light the cigars, probably in the 1880s in politics, they were already got the cigars lit, and they're probably drinking already, but nevertheless, <laughs> they light the cigars, they get in a celebratory mode. Then another telegraph comes, literally about an hour later, from his brother. He says, hey, you know mom? You sent mom to New York City to take care of your, your wife while you were away doing politics? Well, mom is not doing well. You need to come home, see your baby, and it doesn't look good for mama. So he hurries, he leaves Albany, heads back to New York City. And when he gets to the house that night, his brother's waiting at the door, almost speechless. He says, I've got some really bad news. He's like, Mama's not going to make it. Your child has been born, but your wife, she's not going to make it. So the night of February the 13th, 1884, Teddy Roosevelt spent the whole, whole night walking the hallway, seeing his mother, who was dying of typhoid fever that she contracted while going into the city, seeing his wife. February the 14th, 3 a.m. in the morning, he loses his mother. 2 p.m., February the 14th, that afternoon, he loses his wife. The Presbyterian minister who did the funeral said he'd never seen such loss. Historians look at Teddy Roosevelt's journal, and there's a big X on February the 14th, 1884. There's a big X with the words, the light has gone out. It's too much. Where does he go? If you know his story, leaves New York City, goes to the Dakotas just to get away. He goes into the wilderness. He goes in the wilderness to grieve. He goes into the wilderness to commune with God, to figure it out. He's only there for about a year or two, year and a half, and we know he comes back, enters politics, but here's what he says. He said, I would not have been President of the United States had I not gone into the wilderness. To be human is to go into the wilderness. And it's in that wilderness we determine and we see the type of person God wants us to be. I shared a version of this sermon, a shorter version, to the students on Friday morning during their weekly devotion. And part of what I said, and part of possibly what I confessed, is that for teenagers these days, one of the leading causes of death is suicide. It's suicide. It's them recognizing that part of what it means to be human is to find yourself in the wilderness is to understand we all go there. And what we see in today's gospel passage and what the people of God have seen throughout the Bible is that God is indeed Emmanuel. God with us. God with us in the wilderness. God's Spirit is there with us, guiding us and leading us through the wilderness so that we can be the type of person God intends us to be.
Turning to page 326. Let us join in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God for God, light for light, true God for true God, begotten of my name, the one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came out from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a son of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in the words of the Scriptures. He descended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We live for the resurrection of the dead. Earnestly, who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things and to judge of all men, we acknowledge and we lay up our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent when our heart is sorry for these dark stewards, the remembrance of them is grievous of the past. The burden of the end is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hereafter and hereafter preserve the needs of the kingdom of supply. Give the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail under heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteousness, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, not only ours, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Please be seated. Special welcome if you are visiting with us today. Um, welcome to St. Thomas. After the service, I'll shake your hand. I'll be out here shaking hands. So please introduce yourself to me if you are if you are visiting. And also we have a coffee hour, so please feel free to, to join us in coffee hour in the parish hall. 
A um, couple of different things as we have entered the first Sunday of Lent, as you probably noticed. Uh, we say in the great litany, litany thank you, Emily, uh, for doing that. Also, uh, pay attention to the responses. We will be in right one during Lent. And in case you really haven't noticed, of course you have noticed, we're, we're uh, training some new acolytes. So we have some new acolytes today. So thank you all um, for acolyting. So you might see some new faces up here. So um, we are very, very, very grateful uh, for our new acolytes. The um, couple of announcements on the back of your lesson leaflet, you see what is happening uh, this week. The Bible study is always at 430. There might have been a little typo, my bad, in the newsletter, but the Dante class with Father Beatner, which I kind of mentioned in the sermon, is at noon. Um, so bring your Dante. You can jump in anytime. He's very gentle and wonderful. And, and so you can talk to Father Beatner in here today if you want to be a part of that. Um, the other thing you will see is... Um, is, is a Wednesday nights during Lent. I will have a, kind of a different series. I usually preach on the saints, uh, but these next few weeks during Lent, um, I will be preaching on prayer and different forms of prayer. So if you are looking for a Lenten discipline, still time, um, you can make Wednesday nights Eucharist a part of your discipline and, and come learn more about prayer. The, uh, I do want to say that you will see, um, we're going to in the season of Lent, we're preparing for Easter and Resurrection. Um, we will start making some of those preparations on the grounds. Um, we, are, we are looking at possible ways to, to redo the grounds here. So you will want to, um, maybe some flowers out here, um, in different ways to kind of, as, as you come into our courtyard, of just hospitality and welcome. Hospitality is central to who we are, and that involves parking your car and walking into the, onto campus. So um, I know Debbie, or wait, Gail, Gail is a part of that, and where's, I'm looking at Buzzy, Gail and Anna Pistelli are kind of leading up this charge here. So um, there they are, they're back there. Um, it's, it's a wonder, when I put on my glasses, I can see you. Um, so yeah, so talk to one of them. Uh, we've got some, we, we have some possibilities to give if you've, if you've seen campus and, and want a, that courtyard and that front entrance to look, um, to look quite spectacular, and it will. Continue um, prayers for the people of Ukraine. Um, we definitely pray during that great litany for, for our leaders, for countries, for those in war. Um, but I encourage you to hold special attention for them in your hearts. Walk in love as Christ loved us. He gave himself up for us in offering and sacrifice to the Most High.
Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto Him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name, evermore praising Thee and saying, give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and rendering unto us most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine. Then we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept us our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and may one body with him, 
that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our own manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bound in duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offense through Jesus Christ our Lord. By him and with him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ, we preserve thy body and soul in the last time. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, we preserve thy body and soul in the last time. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, we preserve thy body and soul in the last time. Turning to page 339, let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us. And that we are the very members of your corporate, mystical body of thy Son, 
the blessed company of all faithful people, and our hearts also are the heirs of the of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that heavenly fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us all of you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.